Puerto. Hello. I, I keep this. Okay. <coughs> Time to drink. Hello. Thank you very much. Thank you. حسب العمر طال عمرك حتى بالعمر تودلر اب تو 18 اور ميبي تو مولود شوي عمره ذي يصير 15 ساعه 16 ساعه أه، تين ايجر في المدرسه لازم حوالي مش اقل من 11 ساعه مش اقل على فكره احنا عيالنا طول الليل قاعدين مع الواتساب مع المسجز مع التيك توك ما ينامون زين ولما نصير افريج نصير أه، سبع ثمان ساعات بس هذا ما يتطبق على اوتستيك هذا ما في هالكلام ذي هذا مو موجود هذا شيفت وركر اونلي دو ذات ذوس ار وركينج شيفت ذي سليب ات ذا داي اند ذي ورك ان ذا نايت اند ذس از كولد شيفت وركر سليب ديس اوردر ذات از انذر ايشو اوتيزم اوتيستيك تشيلدرن ذي هاف ذير اون باترن اوف سليب ذير از ناثينج يو كانوت ابلاي الستاندرد اللي تعرفه نام يا بابا ست سبع ساعات بكره وراك مدرسه this is not applicable for so please don't try to copy whatever you are doing for your boy to your autistic boy it's quite different شكرا. but you will learn with the time and his mom which routine he will go through okay uh, can we open this so we can give this one mic excuse me Can you open this? Yes, uh, you can take this for the audience if they have. Thank you, Dr. Abdurrahman, for the great talk. Uh, my name is Dr. Fatma. I have a child on the spectrum. And to be honest with you, your topic tackled um, a major chapter in my life. Uh, my child had sleep disorder since he was two. Even before the official diagnosis, he was showing the signs of sleep disorder. And uh, we suffered for this for five years. He is now seven, and alhamdulillah, now he is settled. My experience with the sleep disorder was uh, very dramatic, and actually he had both. He has primary and secondary insomnia. And the maximum hour which he was able to sleep, two hours per day. And it was not continuous even which drove the whole family crazy, to be honest with you. I even had two minor accidents because of the lack of the sleep and the uh, work, and he was very moody in the day, and his learning uh, was a little bit in a roller coaster because of lack of sleep, obviously. Uh, my issue is that uh, our colleagues in the healthcare sector, um, they are not aware of how important uh, it is to detect and to tackle or even to direct the families where to go when they face such dilemma. I wish I knew you when I was suffering five years ago uh, because I tackled several doctors and nobody gave me an, an answer. Even some of them, um, they um, minimized the, uh, the problem and told me every child does not sleep. Simplify it. Children, they, they don't sleep. Why you are complaining of a child who is only was barely two, actually. But um, uh, it was very traumatic. And then um, I started actually to read a lot online. And uh, I started him uh, cautiously on melatonin. And our life shifted 360. It was like a magic solution. Of course, I did all of the sleep hygiene, everything. And uh, I was having like cycles of melatonin. Have it and then wean it off, have it then wean it off to see if he could sleep without it. Alhamdulillah, now he is, uh, I think, around six to seven months without melatonin. He can sleep nicely all night long. Great. And I do agree with you with the part if he is having uh, troubles to sleep at night, it's okay to miss one class early in the morning as long as he is happy and content and if he is also comfortable. <coughs> This is very important things, your eyes. By the way, worldwide, now they have the trend of shifting starting school time. I wish. 
the statistic, statistic worldwide, if you delay the starting school time, now for the normal, huh? normal people, normal kids, delay starting school time by 45, 50 minutes only, <clears throat> our, our kids in the school, they will get more than 50% improvement in there because they are staying awake in the night anyway. So you wake them up at five to go, or at six to go to catch the school at seven, this is agony. You cannot help him. So the only way is that create a concept. So maybe other school, Alia, other, they think about this point, maybe, but this is something uh, worth to think about it. Um, my, last, uh, my last point is, if you are starting a sleep awareness community here in Bahrain, uh, I will be happy to join. Uh, because I suffered and now we are in a better shoes and I don't wish anybody in the world to have this experience in the sleep disorder. Shukran. Thank Shukran, thank you. Anyone else? Yes. yes. Uh, this is Dr. Vijay, sir. Yes, yes, please. It was a very good presentation. Thank you. Um, really, I appreciate and my queries are two to three things. We also strongly believe, yes, sleep is the base which uh, lands with psychosomatic stress and definitely a lot of disease starts. And you have been uh, given very vast details about sleep, about ADHD child. So I would like to know your experience on sleep during pregnancy. If you could share some few valid points. Uh, I want to take, uh, I want to take, uh, I want uh, the delegates to take a message that to prevent autism, sleep during pregnancy also plays a major role, which is, uh, I strongly suggest. So rather telling me, if you could share in this stage, it will be a take home message to all the delegates. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I cannot comment on pregnancy and autism. I'm not uh, in the shoes of this kind of things, you know. But from my experience in the sleep medicine and as ENT surgeon, I can confirm one million percent. All ladies, all ladies during different stage of pregnancy, they suffer from some breathing disorder. Depends on how they are pre. If they are obese lady, lady they will have definitely big problem. Thin ladies has another problem. Ladies with jaw over pushback, they can have. So they suffer from different degree of deoxygenation during night. Uh, we convince them gradually, the community, we still struggle with the, with, the, with the, not because of autism, because of different issue. We have sleep apnea, it's very much common, and sleep disorder in ladies during pregnancy. And we show them that they have their oxygen drop, should be over 96, 97, whatever it is, the normal value, they drop by 80 and even less. So that is a fact, but I am speak from prospect of uh, sleep apnea issue. Thank you. Any other questions? Hi, good morning, Dr. Uh, Garib. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, uh, I'm a good uh, follower of Mohammed, your son. So from parent Thank to parent, you. I have a question. I know Mohammed's 26 years now, right? Uh, I th think Six so. years? Is he 26 years now? Almost oh, above that. I think okay. 27 he is going okay. to be next month. Um, till what age was he co-sleeping with uh, the mom? Till Again? what age was he co-sleeping? When did he co -sleeping. start sleeping alone? Yeah. Like when, when was the transition? I can't tell from our experience. He was with us, I don't know until the age of, yeah, those days he was not able to sleep. He was roaming in the, in the, the whole house, the full night. My we son, should, we uh, should bring him in bed. In bed, so my yeah. son is 16 years old, and for the past, um, you know, four or five years, he's had this new habit, which we've tried numerous times to break off. So he'll go to his room, go to his bed, the routine is perfect, we know exactly his cues, he goes to bed, he sleeps. Exactly around 1.30 or 2 o'clock, he gets up in the pitch dark, comes to our bed, just runs, jumps, and he just jumps on our bed. Like, he doesn't feel like, oh, mom could get hurt or trampled, nothing. He jumps into the bed, 
and he sleeps so well. And a couple of times, like, you know, therapists have guided us, no, we have to tell him this is not your sleeping bed. Wake him up, take him back to the bed. But this goes on, like, there has been a time where... I don't believe in that. <laughs> Sorry. It, it failed. It this, this, is, this is the classical way of dealing with these things. So and we have special, special cases. Yeah, so I, I agree with you because we did that a couple of times and it was exhausting because we're not getting sleep, he's, his sleep is being broken, and it, it affects everyone. So the thing is, my husband and I said, he comes back to bed and he sleeps so well, we just left it. Now he's 16 and we, we've let it be because it's his comfort at the same time. Have another bed in the room for him, why not? Okay. Why not? Another room, another bed in your bedroom, so let make him happy. Okay. So there's no hard and fast. I, I'm not the right person to answer and give answer on, on something like that. Al-Qa'a, uh, mashallah, a lot of psychologists and those experienced people, they can tell from their point of view what is the better option. I am here just to highlight things. It doesn't mean I learned that to answer I don't know. Our problem as medical community, we have answer for everything. We used to do that. But I think this is not good. I appreciate yeah, it. Let, let, us, let us give the Khangul Khabbas Khubza. Yani. There's somebody, they should answer this. And we have to encourage our community, please do care of these things. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any comments? Questions? Okay, thanks you everybody. It was a pleasure to have you here and uh, to talk about these topics. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, Dr. Al-Gharib, of course. Now we're going to have a coffee break, and then we'll be back here, inshallah, for uh, the next session. Thank you. We'll be starting at 11, the next session.